Hi guys! In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a sprite sheet or flipbook animation to use in a fire particle system in Unity. I started out learning 2D animation in college and I still love the look and motion of traditional effects animation. The simple 2D look isn't always in keeping with the art direction of a given game, so this is how I add detail while keeping 2D motion and a fairly quick workflow. Here's a preview of the final effect we'll be making. On the left you can see the uh, uh, base effect that the fire is using, um, and it's just using the simple flipbook. Uh, the one on the right is embellished with a light and some additional particles to help sell the effect. So to start it off, uh, we'll be headed over to Flash. So I work in Flash because I've been using it for over a decade now, but really any 2D animation program will do. So if you're more comfortable in TV Paint or Toon Boom or even Photoshop, uh, work there. Um, all you gotta do is create a black and white animation that will be the base of the effect. When you're working on this, remember that you're not animating fire in the way that you would normally do it. Um, since the particle effect can be rotated any number of directions, it's important that the motion is not biased in one direction or another. Um, that said, you do want to have internal motion, like the, this swirl or uh, these swirls, something that uh, expands on the basic blooming animation. Um, and make sure that you're getting in these kind of circular details, as that's one of the main hallmarks of what makes fire look fire-like. Over in After Effects, we're going to bring in the animation that we made in the other program. Uh, and here you can see we've just brought in a series of JPEGs. Um, and this series is 32 frames long because a nice square number like 32 um, tends to work well and is long enough to last about a second in game. And having a nice square number makes it so that it fits on a texture sheet nicely. This isn't going to fit perfectly on a um, 1024 or 2048 texture sheet. It's only going to take up half of it, but we can fill the other half with another um, set of textures at a later date for some other effect. So the first thing we're going to do here is duplicate our footage, go turn on a uh, luma mat track mat. Oops, do I mean that? Yeah, I do. Um, and then we're going to invert the bottom footage. There we go. Oh wait, I may have meant the opposite. Yeah, that's what, what I meant. <laughs> the luma mat inverted. So that now we just have the regular effect by itself. And here if I put something behind it, you can see that they, I've gotten rid of the background. The next major step is I'm going to pre-compose these so that I don't have to deal with their mat anymore and I can put different things on top of them. So I'm going to select them, right click on them, and go down to pre-compose. I'll just call this fire cut out. Move over all the attributes. Cool. So now I have this fire. It's successfully cut out. I'm going to make a new solid on top of it. Purple's fine because what we're going to do is throw on a fractal noise. Turn off the complexity on that. And we are going to use a luma mat to cut into our fire effect. So you can see that it's poking holes through it. Um, if I turn up the contrast, you can see where we're going to be getting some of our extra detail for the fire. Next, we make an adjustment layer on top of everything. And this is where we're going to put my favorite vector blur. And we're just going to put two of those on there. So the first one will be a natural effect that will cause it to get a little bit stringier. 
and the second will be a direction fading and that will add a little bit of wispiness into it. So without much adjustment you can already see how we're going to get some of this motion in there. Well not motion but detail. We already have the motion. We did that first. So at the moment all of the interior de detail is staying in one spot and that looks stupid. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our fractal noise and we'll be animating the where is it? Transform scale of the noise pattern. It's important that you scale the noise pattern and not the layer's actual scale because you don't want to lose detail um, in your detail noise map. So we'll flip that to a smooth keyframe and you can see that the texture now expands with the effect. Let's see, I'm also adding a bit of evolution right in here to help the motion change over time. So without that, it stays stagnant and with it the whole thing kind of shifts on the interior. So let's see. Let's stop looking at it with this purple background for a second. Uh, and this actually reveals an error I was making. The effect layer should be targeting the alpha in this effect, not the lightness, because we're working to preserve our alpha. Um, yeah, you can see that it completely breaks when you turn on the background now. Good. That's the correct thing. That's what it's supposed to do. It looks like I'm also going to have to turn up the natural vector blur to get some of these nice creases in here. Okay. It's looking pretty good. I could fiddle with this for a while, um, and if you feel like fiddling, down here in the evolution options you can change what seed you're using for the noise and so you can try out completely different looking bits of fire like this looks nothing like what we were working on before the motion's all there but all of the details have shifted around and some of these will work better than others Anyway, I would fiddle with that for easily half an hour if left to my own devices. So instead, I'm going to call it there. Um, I've already put this in a, uh, in a pre-comp called Alpha in some footage that I lost. Um, but now I'm going to back out and show you that all of this color is gotten simply using a... Uh, inner glow layer style. You can get to that by going by right clicking and going layer styles inner glow. And then you'll want to set it to normal, 100% and gradient, and then set up a fiery gradient like this. Looks super cool. Anyway, with all that done, we're going to grab our composition, throw it in the render queue. For the output module, you want PNG sequence, RGB plus alpha. And this will maintain the alpha you've been seeing in the project and carry it over into the texture sheet. So we will export it to a new folder that I'm calling demo fire, and I'll just call it demo fire. So then I'll hop over to my desktop and launch glue it. I mentioned before that I was looking for a lightweight program for packing animated sprite sheets, and this is the one that I am now using. Works great. It's super lightweight. I can just throw in a whole bunch of images, set the number of columns, in this case 8, uh, click glue it, I get a little preview. Um, if I want, I can preview 
the animation up here, but I already know what that looks like, and hit save. And I'll save it as demo fire sheet. Uh, anyway. Alright, save that there. Done with glue it. And we can pop back over into Unity. Um, don't forget that if you're going to be doing this for production for a game that you should look into compressing this PNG, but I'm just going to bring it in to preview what it looks like. Um, tick on alpha is transparency and let it know that it's bigger because I don't want to lose all that detail that I've just put in. And yeah, so here is the original effect and I'll just click in one of those and throw in the new sheet. So that's the sheet I just made with you guys. Looks like the alpha is a little bit lower, but just bring that up a little bit. Makes it look nice and sharp. So there you go. That's how I use 2D animation and After Effects noise to create fire effects to use in Shuriken particle systems. I hope this helps you in your own work or inspires you to try out a new technique for yourself. Anyway, I'm Ryan Gatz. Check back here for more tutorials and demos, and thanks for watching.